Sorry, this is for what? Uh, yeah, my friend over here, you got Where are you going to broadcast? Like YouTube or what? Yeah, we just, you know, we're just like, Yeah, as long as I can get the channel. As long as I can get your channel and see it. Oh, no problem. Yeah, okay. Just okay. Nick. Okay. Let's go! 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 let us I think it's under his hat in many different ways. Um, and I believe that uh, Sharia law does does pose a threat. Uh, and I know a little bit about it. You know, but I've done I've done some reading on uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in America. Now I know it's a controversial topic and. You know, and people can come at it from their own perspectives and from, from their own angles. But I think the problem is generally more serious with the Muslim Brotherhood and their influence in America than most people understand. And if you'll allow me to explain, so your viewers can, uh, can research that, this themselves. Not trying to tell anybody what to think, but people should should want to know the truth and should dig deeper. So there was a, a case in 2003, a federal lawsuit called the U.S. versus Holy Land Foundation. Okay, and the Holy Land Foundation was a conglomeration of Muslim Brotherhood groups here in America, the most prominent one being CARE, Council of American Islamic Relations, which was an unindicted co-conspirator in this in this federal case for supporting Hamas, a terrorist organization in the Holy Land. So it was the largest anti-terrorism case in the history of the United States, U.S. versus Holy Land Foundation. And there's a laundry list of well-known uh, Muslim Brotherhood organizations indicated in this in this trial, okay? So, within the court documents, and Act for America, which, which I support, is one of the few organizations that hammers this point home. In the court documents that led to this, uh, that led to this conviction of the Holy Land Foundation, were uh, Muslim Brotherhood statements, which indicated that America would be brought down from within through subversive tactics utilized by the mother, Muslim Brotherhood. So, paraphrasing, but it, but it said we will we will bring America down uh, from within by their own hands. Okay. So, but now our political leaders, just to finish my point, our political leaders, not not only on the left and the Democrats. Barack Obama and, and the Democratic Party, but even many Republicans, you know, my opinion, like, like John McCain, Lindsey Graham, and, and some other Republicans, they soft pedal the influence of the Muslim Brotherhood. Negative. They, they soft pedal the, the negative influence of the Muslim Brotherhood in America. They tell us that these are moderate groups, moderate Islamic groups. I believe there are truly moderate Muslims in America who love freedom and respect the First Amendment, but I don't believe they are as many or as numerous as our political leaders tell us. Okay? They, they're telling us that these Muslim Brotherhood groups are moderate groups that support the First Amendment. If you notice, every time there's a terrorist attack in the United States, whether it was Orlando, or San Bernardino, or even Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the first Muslim Brotherhood group out in front of the cameras for press conferences always care, Council of American Islamic Relations, and they're lecturing Americans on Islamophobia. Not to call, not to blame all Muslims for this. So they're more concerned about how they're perceived 
than the people who've just been killed and slaughtered in the terrorist attacks. Okay? Americans are tolerant. Americans uh, are peace-loving and, and respect the First Amendment and want people of other religions to be here in this country as long as they respect the First Amendment and, and, and dialogue. And then people can change their minds or change their religions as they see fit. But CARE and these Muslim Brotherhood front, front groups, I believe, are, are exploiting our First Amendment, exploiting our, our, our freedoms to advance, to advance their agenda, you know, whether it be uh, you know, foreign policy that you know, advances uh, Saudi interests uh, in the Middle East, some of the other Islamic uh, states in the Middle East, you know, or providing cover providing cover for terrorists here, operatives here. So so that's that's my statement that I like to make. And you know, if you have any other questions, I'll answer. Yeah, I'll, I'm pretty sure you've heard of like, like, uh, like, uh, like mobile communities that they have already sort of like, like uh, uh, supporting this ABC, they are uh, on Sharia Patrol. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. I'm not familiar with Sharia patrols. I haven't heard. or implement the influence of, of Sharia law. Well, yes, I mean, you know, I, I've heard about, uh, you know, I've heard about no-go zones and ghettos in the UK, and some cities, even here in the United States, like in Dearborn, Michigan, you know, where I, I've read, I don't know if it's true, but up to 40% of the population of Dearborn, Michigan is, is, is Muslim. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's a concern for me. And we should be abiding only by, by American-made laws, municipal laws, state laws, um, you know, federal laws, enacted by, by the appropriate uh, elected officials and, and those legislative bodies, okay? So, you know, surreal, I mean, every religious, every religious uh, faith and, and religious body, you know, they have a right to, you know, to abide by, you know, to abide by the tenets of their faith and, 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 and of their, and, and of their law. But the problem becomes when they, when they want to advocate for that beyond, beyond their own communities, okay, number one, and if the law itself is inimical to fundamental human rights. So, now I'm not an expert on Sharia law, but I know that, for example, if a woman uh, alleges she was raped, for example, as my understanding of Sharia law, there has to be four male witnesses, you know, to confirm her allegation. Okay, that's fundamentally unjust and that that would contradict with a with US law. So those are the types of things 
that we have to push back on. If, 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 we're going to, if we're going to protect our country and our children and our children's children, most, most importantly, we, we can't just think of our, of our own lives. We have to think of the future, the long-term future. Because I think people who want to uh, advance Sharia law as the supreme law of the United States, above the Constitution, I think they are taking a long-term strategy. Um, you know, and they want to raise the they want to raise the flag of ISIS above above the White House. So maybe it sounds alarmist, you know, or, or conspiratorial, but I'm the type of person that takes that takes the Muslim Brotherhood and ISIS at their word with respect to what they want to do. Politicians may not want to take them at their word, or they may want to they may want to explain, you know, uh, the terrorist encroachment. You know, in politically correct terms, like this isn't true Islam. But to get to the heart of the matter, if you want, and, and this is, I'm, I'm going to speak very, very seriously now, because this, this is something I, I really believe. It's just so, and if it helps people just cut through the, the BS with political correctness as it relates to religion, okay? If you want to know what a religion is about, if you want to know what a religion really is, if you want to know what a religion really teaches, go to the founder, the teacher, the, the founder of that religion. What did the founder of that religion teach? What did the founder of that religion do? What does the historical record say about the founder of that religion? Full disclosure, I'm, a, I'm Catholic. I follow Jesus Christ. If you're Muslim, you follow the prophet Muhammad. And what did Muhammad say? What did Muhammad do? What does the historical record show? That's the only objective way you can understand what a religion is and be able to accurately describe that religion. I mean, there are the texts, there are other authoritative bodies that you can look at that will fill in the blanks. But you have to look at the founder. You have to look at what he taught and what he did. We have plenty of information on Muhammad, that he was a warlord, that he was a conqueror, military conqueror. And that Islam's, Islam's uh, model for expansion is violent conquest, ultimately, if you look at history. So that's my statement. And I'm not professing to know, know everything, and I'm always willing to take alternative viewpoints to learn more myself, but, but I stand on what I say.